In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get your 8M Mini Pro ISO to do virtual camera zooms just like this. With one of Blackmagic's recent software updates, they enabled you to now use the upstream key and scale past 100%. And that enables you to do some really creative things. One of them being, for example, having a virtual zoom, so being able to punch into shots like this. So now it's a close up shot of my head and being able to punch out like this. But you can also do virtual zooms which would enable me so if I go here you can see I'm now zooming out and it's a nice smooth zoom out to my wide and you can change in and zoom back in all at the press of a button so I'm going to show you in this video how to set that up it's really simple um, if we jump in to the ATEM software control now this basically uses the upstream keyer so if I jump in We've got the upstream key palette here and it uses the DVE. So what I'm going to do is I'm using camera two at the moment, as you can see here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same source. I'm going to select camera two here. And if we turn it on, you will see I'm, I'm punched in at, at the moment, but let me just reset these. So that's what it would normally be like. So you'd have a picture in picture in the corner. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set the size to one. And then I'm also going to set the position to zero for both of these. And you'll see now it is exactly like having my normal camera. So if I turn the picture in picture or the upstream key on and off, no difference. Even though it is being applied over the top, there's no difference because it's the same size. So now with it on, what I can do is I can scale it up a little bit. So I'll just grab my slider here, maybe punch in. Maybe we won't do as an extreme zoom as I had before, but we'll go a little to the left here and a little bit up. And now you'll see what happens is if as I turn it on and off, we've got that punch in. And that's how, I, how I'm doing the punch. You can, of course tie that to macros so you could set different levels of zooms and tie those to macros and then have macro buttons for let's say a mid shot a tight shot or if you've got two people in the frame you could do a zoom in on person one zoom in on person two so that's a couple of different use cases so that's that's how we do the punch ins now if you continue scrolling down here under the key under the uh, upstream key settings you've got these things called keyframes and that's how we do the nice slow transition between all the virtual zooms. So I'm gonna, we've got full already. I'm actually gonna set this position that we've got here as keyframe A. So I'm gonna hit set A. And now we're gonna go for a really tight zoom. So we'll go in on the size a little bit here. Make sure it's like a full face. I want it like almost YouTube style awkward zoom. I'm okay with the X. Let's just go up a little bit on the Y, something like that. And now I'm going to scroll down and say set that to B. Now look what happens. So we set those and we, we've set A and B and we've got our full. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I don't want it to be too slow. So I'll just actually make it one. But if you wanted it to be a slow transition between, let's say, full and the, the super close up, you would change this to. I had it on 10 before, so I'll just show you what that looks like. And then we've got this slow virtual pull out zoom. Uh, and it looks really good and it works really well. And of course, you can again tie these to macros. So you could create different uh, rates, so different speeds all and tie them to macros. Let's just set that back to one and show you. So let's go from the full. We'll go to A first, which is the sort of short zoom. Again, you can also put pans in this as well. So I'll show you that in a second. Click on B, that's to the tight zoom, and uh, we've got the full here. So you could create different shots. Let's say actually that A, if we just go to it, let's say actually we wanted to use, it would be this area here to maybe have a slideshow. So we want to have more of me over to the right-hand side. So all I would do is just position me. So you can see there's the, if I creep too far, you've got the shot that's underneath, which is the same shot creeping in. So there's about right and let's say like I would have a slide over in this area here so I can go back now set that as a and that has now replaced what we had before as a so now I've got my 
full screen here could be chatting to you guys if I said something really you know like crazy could go full screen but then let's say we want to bring on a presentation or have a presentation cover this area now I'm over one side of the screen and there's area on this side to have something else maybe an image or something like that and I can go back to full screen that is how to set up what I'm calling virtual zoom for cameras and as I say if you pair this with macros you can do this for multiple cameras and I'll show you that now if we go back into the ATEM software control and in the upstream key I'll just open the macros palette here and you can see right now we've been doing everything with camera 2 but I do actually have another camera plugged in which is my black magic I usually use it for close-ups um, so we're gonna create a macro that does a close-up for camera 2 and a macro that does a close-up for camera 3 and then I'm essentially have four different shots but only using two cameras so let me show you that quickly so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the space that we want to record the macro into click uh, the plus button before I do that, I'm going to turn on the picture in picture so we can see the changes that I'm making. Click plus and we'll call this cam to close up. And then hit record and the ATEM is now recording every change that we're making. Now, as I've already got camera two selected, we need to record a, a, a state change. So let's let me flick to camera one and then flick back to camera two and the ATEM records that that is the camera we want. We're going to set these all back to what we wanted before to fill the screen. So the position will be both zero and the size will be one. And now we have the camera filling the screen. And from there, we can adjust the shot to what we want. So I reckon that's OK for the zoom. And we'll just adjust the position a little bit, maybe come left a little bit or right. There we go. Zoom out ever so slightly and down a little bit. Great that's fine for for that shot now important to remember here once we've got the the camera and the sizing and position set what we're going to want to do is add a pause and I'm just going to create one of one frame and then we've we've had the upstream key on this whole time so that we can see what we're doing we're actually just going to turn it off and then turn it back on because we want when we hit that macro for the upstream key to be enabled automatically but we have to turn it off and turn it on to record that state change now that's the macro done we can stop recording there and what I'll do is I'll just reset the picture in picture and we'll run the macro to show it working there we go jump straight to where we last had so again I'll just reset it and we're gonna create do exactly the same and quickly create one for camera 3 here so we click the box click plus cam 3 close up and hit record now we're going to change the camera to camera 3 and we're going to again reset those positions to 0 and that sizing to 1 so it fills the frame and now we're going to do a, a horribly close shot I'm thinking like this close in fact I don't really need to adjust the position too much maybe yeah something like that we would, I would never use this shot normally, but it's for like a, a real ultra close up. Anyway, we've got that. We now just need to add the pause and off and on and we can stop recording. And now we've got our two shots. Just bring the upstream key off for a second. So uh, I'll reset the upstream key. So the picture in picture is now like that. Now let me show you. So we've essentially got four shots. We've got our two regular shots that I can flip between here like this. But we also have, if we go into the run tab of our macros, our two close up shots as well. So we've got close up on camera two, which is this and close up on camera three, which is this. So we can go between them as well. If I turn off the, the upstream key and if I go then just click on uh, close up camera two, it jumps to it, turn it off again. We can click on camera three jumps to it turn it off again we can cut to camera three so you can see how powerful these virtual zooms can be they can essentially give you even though we've got two cameras four shots or you can create multiple different zoom variations for and macros for one camera so that you could have let's say one camera giving you five or six different zoom variations so you can really vary up your shots now one thing to remember of course is that this is a digital zoom it's not doing anything optically to your camera or, or the lenses so you'll notice as I zoom in nice and close here we are losing some resolution and some pixels 
but I think it's worth it. You get a really cool creative um, sort of look and feel, especially if you're doing this on your live streams. What I would love to see in the future, especially if Blackmagic do bring out like a 4K version of the A10 Mini, is using that 4K input and then obviously using this digital zoom because most people aren't live streaming out in 4K. They are only live, in, live streaming out in 1080p. So you wouldn't lose any of that resolution because you're using a 4K original source but only streaming out in 1080p you've got the spare pixels so i hope you found this video useful give it a try let me know what you think of it in the comments and if you have any ideas for future stuff let me know in the comments if you're new here please do hit the subscribe button i upload loads of tips and tricks just like this one so there'll be more of this coming in the future and finally if you have enjoyed this video please do hit the like button it really helps and once you've done all that i'll see you on the next one